Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. We've talked a bit about catalytic converters lately, and I saw a great meme the other day where somebody had spray painted on the side of their catalytic converter, get a job. But of course, we're talking about the fact that people steal them, and they steal them, and it's very wasteful because they cause thousands of dollars in damage, and the amount they get for the catalytic converter does not make up for that. So the person who gets hit the hardest is the person whose car the cat was stolen from, or their insurance company, or both, because obviously if you file claims, your rates might go up, so everyone pays, so some idiot can make a couple bucks off this, and so it's always good news when they bust up the rings of catalytic converter thieves, and I had this story sent to me by about 300 people. (laughs) Savannah Edens wrote this for Oregon Live. Oregon catalytic converter crime ring busted, police say, Fort Teen accused of trafficking in stolen devices. Months-long investigation by the Beaverton Police Department may have completely dismantled a local organized crime ring responsible for a large portion of catalytic converter thefts up and down the West Coast, police said recently. Two alleged ringleaders and at least 12 of their suspected accomplices were indicted by a Washington County grand jury on dozens of aggravated theft, racketeering, and money laundering charges. They're throwing the books at these people. And the thing about this that I like is that obviously, if you got busted in the process of stealing a catalytic converter, let's suppose that for whatever reason, you went up to steal a cat and you went out there and you got caught in the process. And so they go, okay, what can we get this guy for? Well, some kind of vandalism or something, right? But but the point is that once you get the catalytic converter and you take it someplace and you sell it, you've now got some money here. And if you're working with other people, then you have a conspiracy or racketeering. And if the money changes hands and you do something with it to kind of hide where it came from, you got money laundering. And of course, by stacking these charges up like this, they can get much, much uh, more, more serious punishments in line. The investigation began back in 2021 when detectives said that a 32-year-old man from Beaverton was running an illegal fencing operation by posing as a legitimate buyer, buying and selling catalytic converters. In March, police said they pulled over this man with more than 100 stolen catalytic converters worth about $80,000 on the black market. His arrest led detectives to the person they believe is the top of the crime enterprise, a 32-year-old man who lives nearby. The investigation came to a head in late July when police searched eight locations, including a rented lakefront house, where they arrested another man and said they found 3,000 catalytic converters, hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash, and a high-end car and jewelry. 3,000 catalytic converters. And so whenever you hear that there's a type of crime sweeping the area, sweeping the county, sweeping the tri-state area, sweeping whatever, we always assume that, oh, people have just figured out how easy this is. And so everyone's doing it. And then you find out, no, no, it's actually 14 guys who could be responsible for 3,000 Thefts, And that's assuming they found every one of them because they may have already disposed of a bunch of these. So these people, the 14, are accused of trafficking more than 44,000 stolen catalytic converters with an estimated value of more than $22 million. 44,000. And again, these are just numbers, but understand that for each one of them, Somebody came out to their car, fired it up, heard a god-awful racket, shut their car off, looked underneath it, and there's the exhaust hanging there missing the catalytic converter. And 44,000. 44,000. The defendants in this case were living a nice life, says the officer, who is a spokesperson for the Beaverton Police at a press conference. Police said the organization was capitalizing on the increased price of heavy metals, such as rhodium, platinum, and palladium found in the converters. Those uh, devices cleanse the emissions and reduce pollution from automobiles. Rhodium, for example, is currently valued at over $14,000 an ounce. The tricky part, of course, is extracting the rhodium from the device. I know it can be done, but it's not something you can do in your backyard. 
A standard catalytic converter has just a few grams of precious metals, while intact catalytic converters typically sold for $150 to $300 in cash. Police estimate that once the metal is extracted at a refinery, it's worth about $800. But you'll notice that that's at a refinery. And again, most people haven't got a refinery in their backyard. Because catalytic converters don't have identifying numbers, they aren't traceable, so it's impossible to know how many of these recovered converters came from vehicles in Oregon. Police officials said the organized crime ring was centered in the Portland area, but also spanned six Oregon counties and Washington, Nevada, California, Texas, and New York. Crime rings shipped large boxes of converters to the East Coast and internationally. Uh, hundreds of people may have been involved at one level or another, he's added, but declined to share more details because the investigation is ongoing and they're still gathering evidence. But I suspect at this point, when you hold a press conference, it's kind of like when you flip on the lights uh, in a house and, and all the bugs scramble, right? I suspect that many of the people who haven't been caught yet may kind of disappear and lay low for a while. At least a 1,000 catalytic converters from the Sting are sitting in evidence boxes at Beaverton Police Department's garage. Uh, the department is brainstorming how to get the money from those converters back to the community. Uh, they said the business was turning millions of dollars worth of profit in catalytic converters. You need an organization and multiple people to do that. Uh, they said dozens of law enforcement officers from several local agencies spent thousands of hours on the case over the months, they were constantly weighing the risk and reward of continuing the investigation, building a case, while these guys kept raking in money and stealing catalytic converters. They reached a point in their investigation where they were confident they could take off a portion of the organization. Beaverton's interim police chief said she hoped the work of investigators in her department will provide a blueprint to other law enforcement agencies locally and nationally. Patience has allowed us to take the organization down instead of just scratching the surface, she said. Court documents show that one of the men was operating under a limited liability company in his name. So he'd established a LLC to operate under. He has no previous criminal record in Oregon. In the stolen catalytic converter indictment, he's been charged with 69 counts of aggravated theft. Beaverton police arrested the man last summer for trespassing, and he's found guilty in a misdemeanor charge for being in possession of a burglary tool. He's been convicted three times in Multnomah County in the past decade for driving while impaired and was arrested on several occasions for driving with a revoked or suspended license. And you'll notice the possession of a burglary tool. I've been asked this before. And uh, by the way, there's a guy called The Lock Picking Lawyer on YouTube who puts out fantastic videos. All we see are his hands as he picks locks. And people ask me, they say, Steve, are lock picks illegal? Is it illegal to have lock picks? And I've heard that it is, or I've heard that it's not. And lock picks are an interesting thing because uh, people do often use them to commit crimes. But likewise, they're also often used legitimately. If you call a locksmith out and he says, well, I can bust down your door or I can use lock picks to open the lock, you're going to say, oh, use the lock picks. So obviously they have a legitimate purpose in the right hands. So what a lot of states have done is said that if you have those in your possession and you are either doing something illegal with them or you did something illegal with them or you're about to do something illegal with them, then that would be a crime. But it's in conjunction with what you're doing, okay? So likewise, just so you know, a police scanner. Now there's nothing illegal about a police scanner. Until you put one in your car where you are sitting as a lookout for someone else who's committing a crime. And so if the police bust you and the person is committing a crime and say the two of you were committing a crime. And by the way, you had a police scanner which you were listening to to make sure you didn't get caught. Some states, that can actually be a crime also. Because you're in possession of that and you're using it while you're committing a crime. Depends on the state. Depends on what kinds of things you're talking about. But arguably, for instance, if they catch you breaking into a building using a crowbar, they can say that's a burglary tool because you're using it to commit a burglary. And I know some people will actually say, Steve, these laws, they get so specific and weird. What's the point of all this? Well, the point is they're trying to discourage this kind of behavior. <laughs> they don't want people using lockpicks and crowbars and police scanners to commit crimes. They don't want people committing crimes at all. 
But the point is that they're trying to discourage all of that. And so the thinking is that if you're using these kinds of things while you're committing a crime, it's escalated a bit from the lesser, more simpler crime. So there you go. So meanwhile, the district attorney said the investigation marks a significant success in stopping quality of life crimes, which often disproportionately and negatively impact the financially vulnerable and historically marginalized as they strain resources in both small businesses and families. And you might say, Steve, is that true? Well, that could be true. Think about it this way. Um, do you park your vehicle in a garage with you know garage doors locked and all that stuff? A lot of people say, no, I don't have a garage. Got to park it on the street. Got to park in my driveway. So the thinking is that that actually might be something that indicates economic status. So meanwhile, safety comes when people live without fear. That means feeling safe when you walk down the street, knowing your kids will be safe when you drop them off at school, and believing that when you park your car, it'll be there when you get back with its catalytic converter. And, you know, that's the other thing that is extremely difficult to quantify, you know, put a number on. And that is, I've known people who said that they came out to their car in the morning and they opened the door up and they immediately realized that they'd forgotten to lock their door the night before. Somebody had walked by, seen something in the car, opened up the door and just grabbed something and ran off with it. And they'll say, it pisses me off that someone stole from me and I'm upset that I lost whatever they stole. It also angers me that they went into my car. I feel violated. And I know people who've had their homes broken into. And they say the fact that someone broke into my home, I feel violated and it makes me feel less safe in the home. And so when somebody climbs underneath your vehicle with whatever tool they use and, and, and hacks off the catalytic converter and takes off, they didn't get inside the car. But they were possibly, depending on where the car's parked, on your property, staking the place out, checking it out, looking for stuff they could steal. Then they are, of course, climbing underneath your vehicle and committing a crime where they're harming you. And so it is the kind of thing that, yeah, they're going to make a couple hundred bucks by selling that thing somewhere. It's going to cost you a few thousand dollars and a bunch of aggravation to get fixed. And you're also going to be left with that feeling that this happened to you. So I'm glad to see they busted the ring up. Hopefully this will put a dent in it. But unfortunately, we know how that goes. It's trying to put a dent in the tide as it comes in. So Oregon Live published it. Savannah Edens wrote it. A lot of people sent it to me. Oregon catalytic converter crime ring busted, police say. 14 accused of trafficking and stolen devices. And they've been hit with a lot of charges. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Life does not owe you anything because life has already given you everything.